Quantum Would I Lie to You, the show all about terrible lies and amazing truths. On Lee Mack's team tonight, the chef and food campaigner responsible for Escape to River Cottage, Return to River Cottage, The River Cottage Treatment, The River Cottage Year, River Cottage Forever, Beyond River Cottage, and could you please shut up about The River Cottage? It's Hugh Fernley Whittingstall. And one of the funniest comedians on the circuit, if only to look at, it's Rufus Hound. <laughs> and on David Mitchell's team, a comedian who does adverts for the Welsh Tourist Board. I can't help thinking they should have got someone a little higher profile, maybe someone who hosts his own hit panel show. <laughs> Just throwing it out there. It's Rod Gilbert. And one of the very best comedians in Britain. She's talented, she's charming, witty, erudite, and beautiful. She also gets to write all her own introductions. <laughs> it's Miranda Hart. <laughs> so uh, we begin, as always, with round one. It's Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the truth from the tosh. Hugh is first up tonight. Hugh, would you uh, reveal all, please? Occasionally, as a treat, I put Marmite on my face and let my dog lick it off. <laughs> face. 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 Yeah. And this is, yeah. this is a treat for you or the dog? <laughs> I see it as a treat for the dog, because... How does like, he see it? Like many people, I don't... <laughs> Apparently also very much as a treat. What kind of dog, please? She's a Springer Spaniel. You say this is predominantly for the dog. You must enjoy it on some level, because that's quite an extreme activity to do with... I've always just liked... Just for a dog. I've always liked having my face licked by the family dog. <laughs> always. By just the dog? Anyone else? Uh, well, cats have a raspy, sandpapery tongue and it's not nearly so nice. Have you ever been caught in that awkward moment where you've marmited up and then somebody's rung the doorbell? <laughs> uh, by members of, of the household, but not by strangers at the door. Do dogs like marmite? Dolly does. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a helpful line of inquiry, is it? You. Do dog, dogs like... They yeah, like salt. Of course it's a helpful it, line of inquiry. Is it a helpful line if of inquiry? all dogs hate Marmite, it can't be true. Yeah. I don't think there's anybody on the planet that could answer that question properly. You don't think there's anyone on, on the, the planet, planet that could answer the question, do all dogs like Marmite? No, I don't think there is. I don't, I don't want to, this to sound like a rebuke. <laughs> <laughs> what I was saying was whether anyone knew whether or not all dogs might hate Marmite. You, yep. You'd know if well, all that's, dogs... That's ate. very much just the other side of the coin, my book. <laughs> no, 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 this isn't a coin. There are three things. There's dogs all hate Marmite, yes. there's dogs all yes. like Marmite, yes. or there's dogs have a similar view to Marmite as humans do. Yeah, what, let me not hate it. Rob, Rob, yeah. Rob, yeah, no. as, as someone who's now in Series 4, you never get into conversations like this before. <laughs> <laughs> he always wins or wears no. you down, just don't do it. <laughs> Surely, surely it is in there almost certainly true that some dogs will like Marmite and some won't. No. For example, right. I would say yeah. that no cats right. like baked beans. Would you? <laughs> no! Two hours, my cat yeah. got stuck in a fridge and genuinely ate a bowl of uh, baked beans. Genuine, I swear, my life. How did the cat get stuck in a fridge? <laughs> the cat, um, I don't know, just leapt in when my mum opened it once. And then sh and you didn't see, and she didn't see a cat in the fridge? <laughs> <laughs> she did that. Probably got some milk, cat jumped in, shut. Well, she got the milk for the cat and then went, where's the cat? <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong about cats and baked beans. What I'm saying is there are some foods liked by many humans that certain other species will never eat. Yes. So what I'm saying is different species like different things, and no, it is possible. You said that humans, the things that humans eat, that other animals, de yeah. all other animals, the species. We've got to learn like. to work together. Well, yeah, you really have. Well, in that case, you need to change your opinion. <laughs> this program has taken on a tone of civil unrest. <laughs> I sense anarchy at the gates, David. I'll caution you once. Control your team. I'm going to have to call in the UN. <laughs> I, don't think I, cannot, I can no longer vouch for my team. Excuse me, what I'm have sorry. I done? I feel like a supply teacher who's been parachuted into a problem school. <laughs> and is finding it very difficult to cope. Hugh, your original statement... <laughs> Yeah. 
was uh, to do with the, the dog licking off your face. Now, now, how often does this occur? It's something I started doing as a kid uh, because it was a good way to... That was a, several a good dogs... Good way to what? <laughs> <laughs> to, get the, to get the family dog to lick my face. <laughs> so, David Mitchell, what are you saying? Uh, truth or lie? Rod, what do you think? Oh, no. <laughs> Whatever my captain thinks, I will back him to the hilt. Oh, oh my say, word. Thank can you. I just say that he just touched David's leg in a slightly effeminate manner? <laughs> like that. If that's what it takes to have them working as a team, Miranda, <laughs> I'm happy. That all right was sexual tension, is that what you're saying? <laughs> is that sexual tension? Oh, yeah. Well, I don't like it. <laughs> um, Miranda, what do you think? Um, I think it is a lie because uh, he doesn't look that desperate for affection in his life. It has to be a lie, David, otherwise there's something wrong with him. Mm. <laughs> so you both think it's a lie? Yes. yes. OK, we'll say lie. There's a lot riding on this All one. Right. <laughs> so, uh, Hugh, Fernley Whittingstall. It was a lie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It was a lie. Was Hugh a does not put Marmite on his face and let his dog lick it off as a treat. I once let a German shepherd lick Marmite off my face. Uh, if you're watching, Jürgen, I'm sorry. I, uh, <laughs> I didn't mean for it to end like that. Um, Miranda, you're up next. Right. I always test the temperature of my bath with my ear. There we are, Lee. What's wrong with the conventional elbow? Well, two things, Hugh. Firstly, it amuses me to test it with my ear. And secondly, I, I'm a big fan of the bath and I like to get it right and I think it's more sensitive. I sometimes test hot food, the heat of food, <laughs> by my ear as well. Could you, could you mime the process of, of how you... Put your ear in the bath. No, it's simply a question of kneeling at the bath. And then I have us. quite high baths. How high from the top would you say the water goes? Well, probably about that much. Right, right. So, so you're, you're kneeling, kneeling down. Kneeling down. Yeah. And, then and you're you can bend away all the way over to get your ear in the bath without... Um, Look, I'm quite any... tall and I just get there quite you're quite bendy as well. I'm bendy. Hi. Can I just I'm add tall some, and bendy. Uh, add some credibility. This is when you put my mobile number at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> So, I'm guessing like most normal people, you, you like a little bit of bubble bath and stuff. So you're basically leaning over, you're going in headfirst through the bubble bath. <laughs> you're going through it, you're going through it, wait, wait. And then suddenly, you've hit it, oop, it's a bit hot, you've come up. Your face is full of suds, yeah? And you go, well, I'll add a bit more cold to that. And then you sit there and wait with your frothy face. Is that, is that what we're expected to believe? Lee, do you usually have a bubble bath? I didn't, I didn't have you down as a bubble bath type. To be fair, David, you probably didn't have me down as a bath type. <laughs> <Yeah. you? laughs> I can tell you that he's got an open fire in his bathroom. Yes. Really? <laughs> and sometimes Miranda will come round and I'll say to Miranda, I'm not sure if that fire's too hot. And she will... <laughs> <laughs> Do you have one ear that's more sensitive than the other? Is it, is it the left, right, always the left, right, always no, the right? always has to be the left because of the, where the bath is. Are you right-handed? Yes. That'll make sense, you see. Do you face what? away <laughs> from the... <laughs> Oh, I'm left-handed and I would go in with the right ear, you see? I'm right-handed, but I would go with my right ear yeah. because of the way my bathroom is. To go with my left ear, I'd have to be turning my back to the taps yeah. when I did it and I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be able to see that... Because ultimately, the taps are responsible for the temperature. Yeah. So I want to be able to look them in the eye <laughs> while I judge what they've done. <laughs> you know those taps haven't actually got eyes? That's your reflection, don't you? Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> What are you going to say on this one, Lee? What, what are you thinking? Is she telling the truth? Honestly, Lee, the physics of this are all wrong. <laughs> if you're kneeling, it's your hips that you bend from. Um, otherwise, your whole spine would have to be able to go over at 90 degrees. No, no, because it's genuinely really easy Can to do. Can you just kneel down and show us roughly how it works? It's literally... So, say the bath is... Can I be the bath? Where's... <laughs> <laughs> Use the bar. Not yeah. this, say this is the water. That's yeah. quite. Well, that's down. convenient, isn't it? That perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. I it's... can adjust it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be the bath. There's the water. Uh, oh, a bit of here. Got me. That was very well done. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. Well done. Okay, Lee. <laughs>
your answer. Do you know what? Until she did that, I didn't believe it, and now I do. I do as well. Now, what do you think, Rufus? Yeah. Still think it's a lie. Do you? Ooh, I'll go with you and say that's true. True. OK. Miranda, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? It was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lie. Uh, Miranda does not test the temperature of her bath with her ear. Rod, you're next. I once had a job where I had to answer the phone and say, hello, beef? <laughs> <laughs> there we are, Lee's team, what do you think? What was the, what was the job? It was a job, uh, it was an office job where... Um, an office job? Yeah, an office job. <laughs> right. In an office, an office job. Yeah, I know what an office job is. Yeah, yeah, well, the word type... office, I'm not confused with, it's the bit about the beef that's getting uh, to it. It's a government department where yeah. we dealt with uh, beef and uh, lamb and uh, suckling cows. <laughs> right, right, right. So what was, the, what was the government department exactly? What were they, what were they it doing? Was the, um, it was an agricultural department in the, of, uh, of Welsh uh, uh, government. So they'd ring up and say, go, hello, beef, and the kind of questions they would ask you would be. They'd say, um, well, we, it was it was all about um, about ca all about identifying uh, animals. Identifying them. Yeah. So they, you go, hello, beef, and they go, ah, I think you're just a man. I'm looking at a big black and white animal. <laughs> <laughs> it's saying move. Can you help me? <laughs> Hi, it's cow. I'm beef. Goodbye. No. <laughs> well, either that, or you might want to put them through the suckler cow. Depends who is male or female. What is a suckler cow? I don't know. I only worked in beef. <laughs> Was this in Cardiff or something? Or? No, it was uh, in West Wales. Was it in Carmarthen? Carmarthen. Kidwelly? Carmarthen. <laughs> Haverford West? Carmarthen. <laughs> Carmarthen? You should work on the trains. <laughs> <laughs> the Welsh office is in Cardiff, but the Welsh office agriculture department, WOAD, is in Carmarthen. So far farmers would ring you up and ask you but questions about Farmers would ring, ring me up and they'd say, I've got an animal here, and it needs identification, and we would give them... What uh, do you mean identification? We would give them cattle identification documents. It was the CID department, CID, well, cattle stop identification. It, stop it. <laughs> I'm, I feel sick with confusion. It's CID. <laughs> In CID. It was oh, you worked in CID? Cattle oh, that makes sense. Yeah. You worked in CID. There's been a mooder. <laughs> <laughs> CID was cattle identification documents. So it's like a cow passport, and we would... They'd ask us questions about a that. A cow passport? A cow passport. <laughs> they'd ring up and they'd say, we've got a new, a new cow in town. <laughs> 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 so you'd send out, you'd send out the official documentation. They would tell me, they would tell me the, the animal's details, and we would print up a CID, cattle identification because document. Because each one needed this. Them. Everyone had everyone to have need, this. Everyone, every, well, everyone, every cow. Oh, every cow, yes. <laughs> so what are you going to say then, Lee? Is he telling the truth? Well, if uh, you, you know a lot about cows. <laughs> a little. I've rung up departments <laughs> of DEFRA and said hello, and they've said hello beef. Yeah. True. And the whole woe true, 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 true. thing, you wouldn't just come up with that. Unless you're very quick and very clever. <laughs> OK, we'll go with truth. He's saying true. <laughs> Rod, were you telling the truth? It was... True! Ah. <laughs> yes, it's true. Rod did once have a job where he had to ensure every cow had a passport. Oh, it's hard enough getting him into the milking shed, let alone a photo booth. <laughs> so at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Lee's team have one. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. This week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest. And it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Steve. <laughs> Welcome, Steve. So, Hugh, first of all, what is Steve to you? This is my friend Steve, who rescued me when I got stuck in a cave looking for bats. Uh, Rufus? Uh, this is my friend Steve, and together we have visited every pub inside the M25 called the Red Lion, apart from four of them. <laughs> And, uh, Lee, how do you know Steve? This is Steve, and uh, we once went camping together when we were in the Scouts, 
and we woke up to find that someone had stolen our tent. <laughs> David's team, <laughs> where to begin? Uh, so when was this uh, camping trip, Lee? Uh, this camping trip was, uh, oh, I would have been about 13, 12, I think, 12. Something. How old was Steve? Steve was about, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Almost <laughs> 13. He, was, he wasn't born. <laughs> That's what made the whole thing awkward. <laughs> no, he, was, uh, he was about, about seven, seven or eight. So you were 12 or 13. <laughs> he, was, he wasn't in the Scouts. He was just a seven year old you'd brought along. <laughs> He was, the Cubs and the Scouts went together. He was in the Cubs, I was in the Scouts, and they, and asked, they oh, issued no every Scout with, with a cup. They did. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what they, they, they put each, each uh, young boy in with an older boy in each tent. Uh, so, where, where were you camping? Uh, we were camping uh, somewhere in uh, the Lake District. I think it was called uh, the Lake District. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you woke up with no tent, is that what you said? Correct. Went to sleep with a tent, woke up without a tent. Do you know. What happened to said tent? It, uh, well, that's a good question. We don't know to this day what happened to said tent. You, you never, yeah. you you never saw was, the tent you said again. It was no, no. Stolen? Yes, I know it was stolen. Oh, was it stolen? Don't stolen? Know what it happened to it. You don't think it might have blown away? You, sorry, you woke up, no tent, and you assumed foul play. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't that deep a sleeper that there was a gale force. We go, oh. You were deep enough that someone had stolen yeah. the tent. <laughs> There's something about wind that's different to, to burglars. They don't, wind doesn't... <laughs> Wind! There's wind! Something about wind that's different to burglars. <laughs> now, there I agree wind. with you. Wind. Now, if that was what you were asserting, that and that alone, I would say you were telling the truth. Wind! However, there's more to this story. Wind does not sneak up on you. Can I ask a question? <laughs> well, did this tent not have a built in ground sheet? No, it did not. Because otherwise, it would have been this is Steve and we were once kidnapped. <laughs> I'm going to jump in here. David, please move on to somebody else. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot about <laughs> He's a huge Batman. The Batcave. Where Batcave. were you trapped in a cave? Uh, in Sri Lanka. Really? Mm. What were you doing in said cave? Uh, looking for bats. <laughs> and yeah. what went wrong? It got dark. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bats live in the dark? Yes, but when I went into the cave, there was quite a bit of sunlight coming into the entrance and actually going quite far into the cave. And I just sort of went as far as I thought was safe, but then the, the sun went over a ridge outside the cave and it suddenly got very dark and I'd gone further into the cave than I thought. But then Steve wandered past. <laughs> and now, uh, so Steve... does anybody see the tent? <laughs> <laughs> Steve, Steve actually heard me shouting for help. Why were you looking for bats in a cave in Sri Lanka? Were you looking to eat them? Funny you should say that. They did have, they'd had bats on the menu in the hotel, and I was told that they got them from this cave, and out of curiosity, I thought, well, I'll go and look. I'd also heard that they had a rather grim way of catching them, which is to, to hang fish hooks down from the top of the oh. cave. And did you go on your own? Yes. And then, so you called for help and Steve was walking past the entrance. Steve, lovely guy, was mm. staying at the hotel mm. and he heard my cries for help. Why did they catch bats with a line? Why didn't you just spray them with something? <laughs> I'll just go in with a machine gun. I think that if you... <laughs> I think it rather ruins the integrity of the individual bat as a starter or main course. Well, <laughs> it's had a couple of machine gun bullets through. <laughs> also, a machine gun a zebra doesn't really spoil it. But not <laughs> bat. <laughs> So, David, what about, what about Rufus's claim, the whole pub thing? How, which of the four red lions that you've not been to, where are they? Uh, I don't remember. You can't find them. But you know there are four, exactly. Um, yeah, we got a list of all the pubs called the Red Lion, and then we went to visit all of them, and I know that there were four that we did not go and visit. Did you go to one on South Ealing Road? Opposite Ealing Studios? Yes. Did <laughs> when did you do this? Oh, fair enough. Was this, <laughs> was this, like a, was this 
this like a mission, a bet, or a... Uh, you... Yeah, we, um, we just uh, we came up with it as an idea because uh, we knew that there were a lot of them and uh, we thought uh, it would be good to visit all of them. In a, peri- in a period of time? Uh, oh. Yeah, over a week. So how do you... A know? week? <laughs> how many are there? <laughs> wow. Uh, there's about 46. We you went visited to 42. about 42. Of them. You visited 42 Red Lions with Steve in one week. Yeah. How do you know Steve? Um, Through from... AA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we went to school together. Right. So, David's team is Steve, Hugh's caveman, Rufus's pub crawler, or Lee's camping friend? Lee is definitely the least believable, I think. Yeah, the two are quite believable. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't believe Rufus at all. Rufus has got a bit of edge to him. Steve looks so sweet and presentable. I don't think he'd be in this weird Rufus world. He does look sweet, does he? Like, just like a little cub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, I, I'm believing Hugh. I am too. I believe Hugh. Am I even getting a look in here? No. no. <laughs> and, and obviously, if it turns out you're true, then uh, super. <laughs> <laughs> you're saying it's Hugh. Hugh. Hugh's bat saviour. OK, OK. So, Steve. Would you please reveal your true identity? Well, I'm Steve. I'm Rufus's best friend. <laughs> and together, we visited all of the pubs called the Red Lion inside of the M25, apart from four. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, everybody. And at the end of that round, David's team have four points. Lee's team have two. Which brings us to our final round, Quickfire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth, but against the clock. And we start with... It's David. Possession. Ah, OK. Out with the box. This is my bloody tent. (laughs) (laughs) This This is the... I'll hold it for you. Thank you. This is the cricket ball with which I bowled out Jeremy Clarkson (laughs) at a charity cricket match. There we are. What, what sort of ball was it? Was Can it we a, see the ball? A leg spin? Uh, Don't give you multiple choice. <laughs> no, it was just Tell sort us. of medium pace. Go on. You ready? What are you expecting to see? <laughs> well, there's a couple of things. Firstly, how long ago was this charity match? It was two years ago, I think. Because that... What, are you checking the serial number? <laughs> Uh, no, I was looking to see uh, how fast around it was, where the splits were, if it looked like it had been hit. I mean... Don't eat it. It's... That's... <laughs> <laughs> I'll you, tell can you... you show us your bowling action, David? <laughs> yes, all right. Yeah. Start with a good catch. Watch out, Miranda. <laughs> oh. Whoa! <laughs> nice. Can I just point out the inadvertent sexism that just happened? That Basically, a girl fantastic. caught something, and before any of you had a chance to think whether that might be patronising, you went... <laughs> let's see the action, then. Let's All see right, the bowling. My bowling action. Don't throw the ball, obviously. No, no. I would, I would bowl it, wouldn't I? But no, I won't let go. It's like that. Oh, <laughs> Seems to have the action. Seems to have the action. What score was he on when you bowled him? I think about... Twelve. And did he run between them or just jump in his jag? <laughs> <laughs> Which other popular celebrities were, uh, were there? Uh, th- well, Nicholas Parsons was there. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a whole team. <laughs> You've got quite a lot to go still. And, and, and I think that was... I mean, it wasn't, was everyone it? wasn't a celebrity. So people were buying tickets to watch this game and it was going towards charity? Y- y- yeah. Why and, were the, and the draw was... Jeremy Clarkson, David Mitchell and Nicholas Parsons, 20 quid a ticket, yeah? <laughs> well, that must have been a pretty, uh, pretty golden ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to say, Lee? Is he telling the truth or not? Well... I really don't think he is. You don't think he is? No, because that, it doesn't appear to be a ball that was used for that purpose. Oh, what do you think, Hugh? I think it might be true, actually. I think so there's enough got... truth there. You think it's a lie, you think it's true? I think it's a tr- lie. You say it's a lie. <laughs> David, were you telling the truth or was it a lie? It is a lie. Yeah, <laughs> it was a lie. It's cool. it's cool. Yes, David did not bowl out Jeremy Clarkson at a charity cricket match. Of course it's a lie. I mean, given the chance to hurl a cricket ball towards Jeremy Clarkson, who among us could honestly say they'd aim at the stumps? <laughs> <laughs> 
It's Lee. <clears throat> Looking forward to this. <laughs> I trained for last year's Paris Marathon, but pulled out when a doctor advised me that one of my legs is shorter than the other. <laughs> Davidson, what do you think? Why did you train for the Paris Marathon? Because I couldn't get into the London Marathon. Why? why? One leg short than the other. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, it was full. What time of year is the Paris Marathon? Uh, about April. Uh, about <laughs> April. About the same time as the London Marathon, then. Lee, Are they on the about, same day? Yeah. Do they clash? How embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe the London Marathon was full. It was a man dressed as a pig. He doesn't mean he's a man who's dressed as a pig that hasn't applied early. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they weren't going. They weren't going. We can't get enough people to fill this. Go over to the fields and try and rope some pigs into it. Hello, pig. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, we'll send one down. We'll send one down. No problem. What made you go to the doctor? Did you have an injury? Did you feel pain? What was... I did. I felt pain during the training and I said... Uh, Where was the pain? In my leg. <laughs> <laughs> Is it not possible for people who have uneven legs to get shoes that compensate for that? That's right. He and said you... that. He gave me that. Right. He and gave me why the wasn't that fine then? When, when your leg's different, your whole body adjusts to make up for it. And it was so different. It would have to be like a stiletto and a trainer. He said, I'll give you, he said, I'll give you the thing to put in your shoe, which will help you do some regular exercise, but your marathon days are over. <laughs> OK, so, David, what are you going to say? Do you think he's telling the truth? Lie. Why? Oh, I believe it. Thank you, Miranda. Thank so, you. So, truth from Miranda, do, lie yeah. from David. I think it could be true, but I, but I think if he'd really wanted to do it, you could have done it. I'm not, all right, I'll rephrase it, OK? I trained for last year's Paris Marathon, but pulled out when a doctor advised me that one of my legs is shorter than the other. He did say, well, actually, if you really tried hard, you could probably do it, but I'm a lazy bastard. <laughs> true. <laughs> true. <laughs> so what you're saying, say? lie. Your team says lie. OK. Uh, Lee, are you telling the truth or are you telling us a lie? It is, in fact, true. <laughs> Told you! Yes, it's true. Uh, Lee did train for last year's Paris Marathon, but pulled out when a doctor advised him that one of his legs is shorter than the other. Actually, I have uh, completely the opposite problem. One of my legs is longer than the other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that noise uh, signals time is up, and it's the end of the show, and I can tell you that in a very narrow victory, Lee's team have oh, triumphed yeah. by five points to four. Wow. <laughs> But it's uh, not just a team game, and my individual liar of the week is Hugh Fernley Whittingstall. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Yes, Hugh Fernley Whittingstall, who hasn't served up such a variety of porky pies since his last TV show. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Well, if I win a million tonight, I'll give them some to you. That's another lie, by the way. It's the National Lottery draws next. Then one call you really don't want to get. Naomi Watson levels the mystery of the ring. Film horror in ten minutes. And there's plenty of great live music and mud as BBC Three comes from the...